Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about whether .NET Aspire is doomed to fail. And the reason why I'm making this video is because we now had two months since the announcement and release of .NET Aspire and we also had a second preview of the product so we can actually take a better look at the comments that people left in my original video like the one you see on your screen right now, Reddit, uh, podcasts as well. There's a great .NET Rocks podcast that David Fowler actually was a guest at shedding more light into Aspire and the plans for the future. So in this video I'm just going to talk about whether the criticism is valid, whether .NET Aspire is really doomed to fail and see where it's going from here. Again, keep in mind that the product is not even in GA yet. You can't really use it in production. Microsoft doesn't really support that, but it looks like they're putting tons of resources behind it. So it's better to understand what's happening with our product sooner than the later, because when it's released as GA, many people will try to commit to it. And we don't want to have people commit to something that will eventually just be discontinued. If you like all of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on dometrain.com. Okay, so this is is a comment that I got in my .NET Aspire YouTube video a couple of days ago, three days ago, actually saying that .NET Aspire aspires, <laughs> funny, to be discontinued within five years, like most of the stuff that Microsoft creates these days. Now, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, like Microsoft, like any other company, will kill things that are not popular every now and then, but it's not as bad as Google. Many people say things like this because Totem Aspire was sort of made through the ashes or the death of another project called Project Tie. But many people miss the point where Tie was just an experiment. This is a proper .NET branded project that is announced as something to be supported, unlike Tie, which always was just an idea, just a project, just an experiment. And I want to remind you that even Blazor, when it first came out, it was released as an experiment. Blazor wasn't supposed to be a product that was released officially, but of course, Steve Sanderson and everything, it eventually became what it is today. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called Getting Started with Modular Monoliths in .NET, and it's authored by the legend Steve R. Dallas Smith. I'm sure Steve has taught many of you already with courses on other platforms like Pluralsight, but now he authored his first of many courses on Dome Train, and it's all about how to get started with modular monoliths. Not only will he teach you the theory behind the concept and how it compares to microservices, or traditional monoliths, but he will also build a whole system in that course hands-on with code and diagrams and examples and you can follow along. It is an amazing course and it is the best way to get started with modular monoliths hands down in .NET. Now to celebrate the launch, I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount, so either use the link in the description or apply code MODULAR at checkout to claim that 20% off. It's a great opportunity to get started with a concept, and I can't stress enough how much of an amazing author Steve is. Now back to the video. Now I really like this comment over here about Aspire because it's, I'm skeptical, how would it work with heterogeneous systems? Uh, let's say I have a front-end written in JS and TypeScript and not Blazor because Aspire was demoed with Blazor, including my demo as well, because it's just very easy to do. Or how does it work if you have backend components written in other languages, like Go, Rust, Ruby, Python, or anything else. Now you have to understand that Aspire is something for your local development environment. It's not something you're gonna deploy in production. It just helps you orchestrate your local services. And technically it will run with all of those things. And Microsoft, especially David, will be very fast to tell you that, yeah, this will work with anything. Realistically, if you're using Rust, if you're using Go, if you're using Ruby, Python, it is very unlikely you're going to use Aspire to run all of those things, even if you have a couple of services in .NET. You have to be a major .NET player and basically have purely .NET services to even worry about running .NET Aspire. I just can't see, having seen the industry and having worked in the industry, people ever making that decision to have all of those things and Aspire on top of it. And then another comment, actually the biggest criticism of Aspire when it first launched is that also as mentioned here multiple times, it will work painlessly only for monorepos. And monorepo is a repository that contains all of your system, all of your services in one repository. So you don't have to actually pull many repos to point to different project files to run your system. Instead, you have everything in one file and you can do everything with relative paths or you can just add the project directly from the same root level to that project that needs it. And that's great for Dota Aspire because that's how it works. Now, realistically, most people don't use monorepos. And I know Google, for example, has a massive monorepo. I think Facebook as well. Many companies have it and use it, but the tooling required to make it work behind the scenes 
it's a pain. Now, the interesting thing about this is that Microsoft took that feedback initially and immediately started working on it. In fact, if we go to the announcement of Todd Aspire Preview 2, if you scroll just a little bit down, you're going to see there's a bullet point here saying add projects without a project reference. And the way this is achieved is by you being able to go to Aspire and say dot add project and locate it based on its path, not based on whether it is added as a project to your solution, which is amazing. Also, in my opinion, the SDK, the .NET Aspire command, is pretty weak. Microsoft talks was way too much on making the .NET Aspire experience great in Visual Studio because they wanted to outcompete, obviously, Rider by having them not have something to implement on time for the release. But the truth is, the SDK experience is ass, and if you're using the CLI, you're really lacking out. I'm sure Microsoft will improve it, especially with JetBrains actually catching up with Aspire support, but I'd still like to see that SDK be implemented further. Now, this was also seen quite a bit. Nice, provided it's not abandoned like Project I, because Project I was indeed abandoned. In fact, I made a video that was really popular back in the day on Thai, but I think even at the time I made that video, Thai was technically dead and people were looking into Aspire. Now, why did Thai die? Well, Thai died because it tried to do way too much. The biggest difference is that Aspire now, it's focused to be just a local development thing and doesn't really care about how you deploy your applications, how you package them, how you run them. It's just everything is local and that's about it. And the amazing thing is that now Aspire gives you an option to make a manifest file out of your system the way you defined it and projects like Aspirate, for example, which is a terrible name, please change it. But anyway, you can take that manifest and then have that be used by Aspirate to deploy to Kubernetes just like that. And as more cloud providers and systems pick that up, Aspire will get more popular. And that's, I think, where the project lies. Because Aspire is there, yeah, okay, sure, to make our lives easier as developers work with cloud native systems, but cloud native by Microsoft should also ring a bell and that bell should say, oh, they want to sell you Azure because .NET directly doesn't really make you any money. Yeah, okay, Visual Studio, but Visual Studio is not the biggest money maker. Azure is in Microsoft. So hopefully they want to make it so easy for you to use Aspire and then you decide that the development experience and the deployment experience is so nice for Azure that you're going to go ahead and use Azure. It shouldn't be lost on you that all the documentation and the Azure Developer CLI team made Aspire be what it is and have such a seamless, easy deployment experience for .NET project. Now, my personal fear is not that Microsoft will abandon Aspire directly. My biggest fear is that because Microsoft has this Aspire package model called a component, and actually let's go to NuGet to take a look at what exactly I mean. If you want to add an Aspire component in your system, which is basically a NuGet package that pre-configures everything that should be pre-configured so you don't have to do it manually. For example, if you want to use Redis, you would do aspire.stackexchange.redis, as you can see over here. And this is authored by Microsoft. And you would go ahead and then say add Redis or add Aspire Redis. And that would have things like health checks, logging, telemetry, everything packaged for you in the form of a component, which is an amazing experience. But when you have Redis, when you have the dashboard hosting, you have RabbitMQ, uh, Postgres, you have things like, where is it? Yeah, again, more Postgres, you have MySQL, you have MariaDB, you have Blob Storage, you have uh, Anti Framework, SQL Server, you have so many things and some of them are not directly owned by Microsoft. And what I mean is the services themselves are not directed by Microsoft. For example, the MySQL connector, it's a third party package. Yeah, it says by Microsoft, but that is because Microsoft owns the Aspire dot prefix basically. And in order for you to be verified and part of the Microsoft family, well, the author of MySQL connector offered this package to Microsoft and they are working on it and published through Microsoft. But if they get lazy or if they get bored working on that component, then what happens? You hope that someone else will pick it up or that Microsoft themselves will pick it up, which I don't know. I don't know if that model of these components being published through Microsoft and maintained through third-party developers, or even Microsoft, by the way, is a good model because if Aspire doesn't do what Microsoft wanted to do, will Microsoft keep updating Redis and RabbitMQ and MySQL services they don't own 
through the SDK and telemetry and everything. I don't know. I really want to believe they will, but I'm also very skeptical having seen projects be abandoned in the past. And that's not also limited just to MySQL, MongoDB as well. Like Aspirate is a great project. You have some community projects being there, but Aspire has to be adopted for this project to survive. And here's the interesting thing. These projects start as pet projects of developers because they like doing them for free, of course. And as the project scales and as the community adopts those packages, they have more demand, but you know that people don't donate or don't support the developers of those projects. So if you don't have many people using them and you're doing it for, just for yourself, then that's fine. But when you do a good job and more people adopt it and they have demands, you have to be like, well, either pay me or nothing, or you turn that project into a commercial project, which we've seen happen quite sometimes, and then you have community backlash, or what happens if the Aspire MySQL connector developer says, oh, no, that's a commercial license, but this package is published through Microsoft. Like, there's so many variables here that could potentially go wrong that I am a bit skeptical, but I do really want to know from you. What do you think about this? Please leave some of your most skeptical comments down below. I want to know what you think about Aspire in general. Two months later, have you used it? Have you tried it? Do you think it's doomed to fail? Do you think there's a path forward? What do you think about these new good packages? Please leave a comment down below and do let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.